An active investigation going on right now. I'm going to step out of the way so you can take a look. You can see the shell casings down here on the street. The death toll has increased to 41 with 239 injured. The airport just trying to get back to business as world leaders condemn this act of terror. Here on Southwest 120th Street and 122nd Avenue, you can see car after car abandoned drivers just wanting to get out and get themselves to safety. Kids young and old, of course, could come and see these animals and even hold them. Even though a threat was made, the school district is saying that threat is not credible in any way, but of course they have to take every precaution. About 320 people inside when that shooter opened fire. It was an off duty officer who was actually working at the club who was the first one to respond. If the kids need a little break from the shopping, the best place to bring them is up here. The Peanuts Ice Palace. What do you think of the real snow? Can you say Merry Christmas? <laughs> Authorities say this was well organized. Like you said it, at least 20 are dead and 40 injured in this mass shooting. Those shots ringing out around two in the morning at Pulse, that very popular gay nightclub in Orlando. About 320 people inside when that shooter opened fire. Dozens of police vehicles, including a SWAT team, swarming that area around the club. At about zero two hundred hours, uh, he responded to. When you talk about hostages, there were 30 inside, and with that in mind, authorities decided to take further action and go inside. They used an explosive device to break through that wall, then opening fire on the gunman. It is unclear when he was killed, but that gunman is dead. Authorities found him with an assault rifle, a gun, and some type of other device on himself. The FBI says this gunman could be tied to radical Islamic terrorism. I would say at this this has been classified as a terror incident, whether it is domestic or international. The FBI is working very hard to figure that out. Robin and Jeff, you said it driver after driver needing help and check it out behind us here. You can see exactly why and believe it or not, this water has actually gone down tonight. We are at 120th Street and 122nd Avenue. These flood waters, though, obviously still extremely high. This is what many areas in South Miami-Dade look like tonight. One woman's dramatic rescue even caught on camera. I was very lucky. Very lucky. Sandra Taylor, lucky to be alive. Cell phone video capturing the moment she was saved. Her car stuck in flood waters near 117th Street and 122nd Avenue after Saturday's heavy rains. I was pinned between the steering wheel and the seat and my leg was wedged in there. I couldn't get out. Until these good Samaritans sprang into action. Like said, we're just standing there. We're like, you know what? We got to help these people out. They're there. The car shut off. These men rescuing Taylor and her elderly mother who did not want to go on camera because she was too shaken up. Thank God. <laughs> I almost passed out. <laughs> and two miles down the road, severe flooding on 122nd Avenue in Kendall. Dozens of people stuck and frustrated. Trying to get home and um, yeah, it's just unbelievable. Here on Southwest 120th Street and 122nd Avenue, you can see car after car abandoned drivers just wanting to get out and get themselves to safety. Yeah, I tried to cross the road, but uh, my car didn't make it, so I'm just probably going to leave the car right here and uh, walk home. Busy night? Yeah, very busy. You see these cars out here. It's very flooded out here. Trying to help everybody at the same time. Ahoy, mate! While others made the best of this mess, using a canoe to get around. You took the canoe out to make a, a beer run? Pretty much, pretty much. Uh, there's no way. We have a little car, too. We would have got stuck. And Fire Rescue is asking everyone tonight to please stay out of these waters so you don't get stuck again. Even though this water here has come down substantially, you can clearly still get stuck out there. There are several roads tonight that are closed. One area specifically, 122nd Avenue between 112th and 128th Street. That area is closed off. There's a lot of flooding out there still. And there's more areas uh, across South Florida where roads are closed. All of that information is on our website. You can find that at WSVN.com. For now, we are live in Kendall. Elita Bezios, 7 News 19. Good morning, ladies. You said it, though. Today will be a normal school day. Some good news to report here. Even though a threat was made, the school district is saying that threat 
is not credible in any way, but of course they have to take every precaution and will have extra resources at all the schools. This threat wasn't made to one school specifically, but just an overall threat. Again, this is not a credible threat. Miami-Dade did release a statement late last night. If we can pop that full screen up quickly. In part, it reads, late Wednesday evening, Miami-Dade County Public Schools received a threat similar to those received by other school districts, including Los Angeles and New York earlier this week. Miami-Dade Schools Police Department has established communications with federal, state, and local enforcement agencies, and at this time, the threat is deemed as less than credible. Again, that is the important thing to point out here, less than credible. Also releasing a statement, Broward Schools, if we can pop that full screen up, it reads in part, Broward County Public Schools received an email similar to the emails received in other school districts such as Los Angeles, New York, Houston, and Miami-Dade. We are sharing this information with our community to ensure everyone is aware of the situation in an abundance of caution. Additional resources have been deployed to our schools and throughout the community. Again, back here on Miami Beach and in Miami-Dade, school will be in session as normal. That threat deemed less than credible, but you have to be, uh, of course, you can never be too safe with these situations. And in a situation like this, authorities, of course, and the school, of course, they always want you to report it, even if it turns out to be something like this, because it is always better to be safe than sorry. For now, we are live on Miami Beach. Elite Sabizios, 7 News. Ladies, authorities reportedly went to 16 locations, detaining some 13 people in connection to Istanbul's deadly airport attack. Turkish officials also saying they have strong evidence that the attackers came to the country from the ISIS stronghold of Raqqa in Syria. Also, we're learning that ISIS leadership from them was involved in planning the attack. All of this as the death toll rises to 43. Dozens at Istanbul's Ataturk Airport Thursday, praying and laying flowers near photos of victims of Tuesday's deadly attack. Come on. We've now learned from Turkish officials the terrorists were from Russia, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan. The three took a taxi to the international terminal of the airport. The attack starting outside where a suicide bomber blew himself up, drawing security forces there. The second attacker taking out his AK-47 at the arrival terminal, eventually detonating his vest. Security cameras captured a third attacker shooting. Investigators say he panicked and blew himself up outside a security checkpoint. Shooting up two times and he's beginning to shoot the people. When the guy turned to put the slice in the oven, I heard the gunshots. This couple on a layover back home to the U.S. hid in a small kitchen, recording this video. <laughs> Here in South Florida, increased security at Miami International Airport. Those landing here from Ataturk call the experience surreal. You still see the bloods at the ceilings. Turkey's prime minister and American intelligence agree, even without a claim of responsibility, the attack has all the hallmarks of ISIS. We have offered all assistance uh, that we have available to our ally, Turkey, and we stand prepared to assist them uh, during this difficult time. And 1,300 miles away from Ataturk Airport, a day after the attack, U.S. airstrikes taking down an ISIS convoy of 500 vehicles near Fallujah, Iraq. According to reports, at least 250 ISIS fighters are dead. Okay, when it comes to people who were hurt in the airport attack, 94 of the 238 who were injured are still in the hospital. For now, live in the Plex, Elite Abizios, 7 News. Robin and Jeff, we've talked to this young man's father and he says his son is a fighter and he is grateful tonight. He is thanking God that his son is alive. His son is speaking tonight and he has told his father that he has no idea who these shooters are and why they would open fire. He is in a lot of pain. He just doesn't know why this kind of thing was happening. 16 year old Jamal Pies lucky to be alive. Miami police say 30 to 40 rounds were fired at the teenager Saturday afternoon. Seven of those bullets hitting him. Back of the head, the arm twice, the hip, the butt, the foot, and then uh, the calf muscle. His father, Joe, talked to 7 News outside of Ryder Trauma. He says Jamal stays out of trouble and focuses on football. He played football player. He was playing for Everglades High School. And then he just transferred to Jackson High School about a, a couple weeks ago. 
The shooting happened around 245 Saturday afternoon near 17th Avenue and 39th Street. Cops say Jamal was walking down the street when the shots rang out. Suddenly two other black males approached them, started shooting at him. Uh, the victim ran. The victim's brother later finding him and rushing him to the ER. The family grateful the young man wasn't killed. I'm glad somebody was watching over him because it could be much worse right now. Police also saying this car driving by got caught in the crossfire, but the driver is only dealing with an eye injury from the glass that shattered. Right now, there is no motive in this case. As for a description on those two shooters, police say all they can tell us tonight is that they are two black males, possibly also teenagers. So if you have any information, they're asking for you to call that in. The best number, 305-471-TIPS. That is Crime Stoppers. Remember, you can remain anonymous if you'd like, and if your tip leads to an arrest, you can earn a cash reward. For now, we are live at JMA, Gilita Vizios, 7 News. Sheldon, you know, a couple of days ago for the Moncada family, Christmas was not looking up because not only was their home broken into, presents taken from the kids, but little Mickey, they took him too. But yesterday, the great news came in and someone had returned Mickey. And also, another big surprise today for all the kids. <laughs> A mother in tears left speechless by the kindness of strangers. It was just a few days ago someone had broken into the family's home. Their puppy Mickey and all the kids Christmas presents stolen. But on Saturday, someone found the dog and reunited him with the family. Then on Sunday. I can't believe it. I don't even have words, but thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, we were just expecting Mickey to come home. That's all I really wanted, but everything came like an abundance with love. Another blessing. Ride to Give came cruising up with gift after gift. I got gooseies. <laughs> it was great. And, you know, it makes you want to cry and it makes you, it's everything was worthwhile. And we did this in less than 24 hours. But the bikers weren't done there. Next stop, Tony Acosta's home, where days before, Grinches broke in stealing her kids' gifts. It's amazing because, you know, worse than, you know, the money that I spent on the gifts, it was just having to tell them that they didn't have anything. And I really, really appreciate it. Also helping the Acosta family Sunday, the Kiwanis Club and Miami Gardens Police Department, giving them a check for $500. And the giving continued at Kiwani Murray's home, where she too was recently broken into. I really do appreciate the love and support that's being shown to my family. Um, we have had a tough couple of months and trying to just recover has been difficult. And Kawani Murray, who you just heard from there, says the check that she got today is going to be an enormous help for her. And back here at this family's home, check out some of the toys the kids got here, the checkerboard they're playing with, and that pile of toys right there on the couch. They say they are so thankful for the toys, but most of all, they are just thanking God tonight that little Mickey is back home with the kids. For now, we are live in Northwest Miami-Dade. Elitza Vizios, 7 News.